One thing that God does is give people back their dignity, okay? Um, Bridget and I have worked with drug addicts and prostitutes and drug dealers and, I mean, you name it, we've worked with them for, for almost three decades, you know? Um, more so bef before than, than now because we were in Calgary and just dealing with on, the, on a regular basis. You know, some days with our team, with Don and Dawson and Dave and Sandy and stuff, we fed, you know, upwards of 300 people in a day, you know? Uh, and we would go around and, and pluck people off the streets and, and bring them in and feed them and clothe them. And, and we had at this facility we're hooked up with, we, uh, it was literally right on the prostitution stroll in Calgary. So they would come in and eat and hang out with us and get clean clothes and shower and then and sometimes go right back out to work but you, you know you're, you're not going to condemn them for it you, you love them through it you know and we've seen people come in off the streets we've seen people get whole and, and set free and stuff like that and God always gives people dignity back you know we know of one lady who this is a terrible story, but I told a terrible story last week, and look what happened. But anyway, I'll try to get through this one. But this, this one particular lady, um, she worked the streets, and her friend worked the streets. And um, four men kidnapped both of them, took them in the van. I won't get into details, but you know generally what happens in a, in a van, okay? Uh, killed the one girl in front of her, and she somehow got out and got free and she turned out to be the one that would go in the, the dark alleys at nighttime by herself and rescue other girls and bring them into the facility you know so so god turned that horrible wretched situation around and made it for the good and you know she we still talk to her on facebook and stuff once in a while you know but anyway that's what god does this this is see people have a huge wrong image of who god is that's who God is. He rescues you from yourself, basically, you know. Um, and yeah, for sure, he'll rescue you from, from the enemy, from the devil. But a lot of people think that the devil's our biggest adversary. That's not necessarily true. I is he? Yes. But who else is? We are. We're our biggest problem, right? And because we're the ones that make all the mistakes and do all the wrong things and then tend to blame God for it or something like that. You know, we're our, our biggest enemy. Like I said last week, we're the prophet of our own life as well because of how you believe and what you think and what you've allowed to come into your life. And, and, and people always say, well, this is the way God made me. I can't, I can't, whether you believe in God or not, that's what people say. You know, this, this is how God made me. No, that's how you made you. You allowed the anger. You allowed the fear. You allowed all these things to come into your life. And then that's how you dictate what you dictate your life by. Right? How do I know? Because I was there. Okay? All this stuff, we can, we can talk about this stuff because we were there. You know, people think we're Christian fanatics and freaks and things like that. And sure, we are. Uh, why? Because I know the other side. Right? Y y nobody here, well, one, not even you really, uh, but her, she knew me on the other side. Right? Um, life is so much better on this side. Because there's no more condemnation, there's no more self-hatred, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about, but that's just what I talked about. So, we're going to look at this. So, Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever puts his trust in the Lord will be safe. So, people who fear other people, what do you fear? You fear rejection, you fear all sorts of different things of other people, right? You fear their opinions, you, f you fear all these different things. So, you begin to live by the opinions of other people. And how they, and this happens on social media all the time. Like, we'll just say a woman, because that's sometimes what happens. Guys don't generally do this. You know, how do you like my new hair? How do you like my new shirt? Or whatever the post, po case may be. And then somebody posts, so that's just, ugliest hair I've ever seen or the stupidest blouse I've ever seen or whatever the case may be and you return it or you throw it away you don't because you're you're basing your opinion or you're basing your life off somebody else's opinion it doesn't really matter now we want of course we want people to have a good opinion about us we want to be well respected in the community but there is going to be people that you could literally give your arms and legs to if they needed them and they still point a finger at you and say you never did anything for me because people don't appreciate things. 
anymore. There's one major thing that's lacking in this world today is honor. Honoring one another. Putting other people first before yourself. That is so foreign. Because in this world we live in, it's I'm going to get everything for me and I'm going to take yours too. You know, and that's just a real wrong way of living, you know. So anyway, the fear of the Lord brings a snare. So a snare, what's a snare? A snare is, anybody trapped animals before? Nobody? Not one person? Oh, okay, well, there you go. So I never have, but, you know, I've seen like Mountain Man on TV and stuff like that. So when you, when you trap an, an animal, they get trapped by that thing and it holds them there, right? And what are they doing? Screaming and misery and pain and, you know, different things like that. And they're trying to get away, but usually they're on a very short rope. So they can only go a certain distance and they lash out at people, right? They're not, you don't go up to an animal that's on a snare and they're going, in, like if it's a big mountain lion or something and he's purring for you, you know, he's ready to take your face off. Well, this is what happens when you have a fear of man. It creates a snare for you and you begin to lash out at people. You begin to be so short and cross and, and you're just wanting to lash out and hurt people all the time, you know, because you're fearing what man would think of you, okay? Now, you should live your life in such a way that you don't have to fear that because even if people don't like you, they're going to like you for, not like you for the wrong reasons because you're only doing good. So they can't not like you um, because, listen, people are going to hate you no matter what. That's just what the world, people are not going to like you no matter what. But if you put your opinion in that, you're going to live by what they say and what they think about you. Okay. Now, as long as you're living good, you have nothing to fear. And you do the best you can. I understand nobody's perfect, but if you live the best way you can, all they're going to have against you is a false accusation. Because if you're living good, they got nothing to hold against you. Right? Does that make sense? But if you're not living right, then they're going to give you stuff to talk about. Listen, especially around in a place like this, this people gossip around here like crazy. You know, but if you give them something to gossip about, they'll gossip about it. Even if you don't give them something, they'll gossip about it. But at least you know you're doing right. And they actually have nothing to say about you except with false accusations. The Bible talks about that, but anyway, we're not going there today. Proverbs, uh, Psalm, Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom will I fear? Nobody. You should not fear anybody. The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom will I be afraid? Psalm uh, 51, or sorry, 5611. So I don't like using laptops. They do things. In God I trust. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Right? And especially over the, fear controls this world. You look at your phone. It tells you to fear everything. You look at, if you watch the news, the, the, it's fear. It's always fear. Here's a prime example. Yesterday, it, it it was 26 degrees out yesterday, right? That's what everything I checked said 26 degrees, okay? And on my phone, it said something like severe heat or oppressive heat brings massive health concerns. If you check the weather app, that's what it says. Okay, so I remembered last year, 26 degrees was a nice summer day. This year, we're all going to spontaneously combust. Like literally, we're, hey, Mark, it's 26 degrees out today. Poof! You know, it's fear. Because they're trying to instill fear on you. If, you. if you think about it, every two seconds, there's a, a new strain of this and a new pandemic or pandemic, whatever, however you want to look at it. There, all these things are happening. Why? To keep you in fear all the time. This whole world is designed to keep you in fear. There's talks about war. There's talks about famine. There's talks about, you know, every two seconds you're going to die of some disease or whatever the case. And it makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do because fear has a voice. Fear will scream so loud in your life, you will do things that you never actually want to do because of fear. And if all fear is emotion. So anyway, I have a whole book on this. Like, if you, if you want to get it, we'll get you one. But it's, there's, it's, there's a lot more to, to it than just what I can say today. But fear is emotion because fear is in your mind. Fear is only in your mind. You don't fear what is happening. You fear what hasn't happened or might happen. And most of the time, it never happens. So you live in a constant state of fear of what might happen. And you base your life off that, and it's all emotion. Do you see how that works? It's all in your mind. So how do you get rid of this? You change the way you think. You change your outlook on life. 
You, you start thinking proper thoughts. Fear will cripple you. You'll lay in bed. You you'll, won't come out of bed for days. We've seen people do that for days. It'll keep you there. It will keep you thinking that your, your husband or your wife is going to leave you. Well, don't give them a reason to leave you. Anyway, it will keep you constantly digging and digging a hole in your life to where you won't even know who you are anymore and you're just completely controlled by fear. You know, we've seen way too many people live like that. Uh, Psalm 118, verses 6 and 7. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can people do to me? It says this over and over again. The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph upon those who hate me. This is King David speaking, right? And he went through many wars and did different things. So what are people going to do to me? They're going to say nana nana boo boo to me? Like, who cares? They're going to call you a name or whatever. Who cares? What are you, you going to do? They're going to gossip about you. Who cares? But what can they really do to me? They can't do anything but get inside my head. And then I'm going to live by, the, by their opinions. That's fear. And it, it, will, it will cripple you. But, and then it says, I shall look on triumph on those who hate me. Why? Because I'm doing what I can to live right. And those who hate me, I will have triumph over them. Why? Because I'm not going to live down to where they are just for them to like me. You know, I said this a while ago. I would rather stand in a field all by myself, uh, on a mountaintop all by myself, than a field with a thousand friends that are liars. You know, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me if I have a million friends or, or friends or whatever. I have great family. Um, it, it doesn't matter to me. I don't need to, I don't have a need in me to be a superstar, you know, um, because that leads to destruction, okay? Now, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So there is a spirit of fear. Now, people fear things, and it's not a spirit, but there is a spirit of fear where that part of it will make you paranoid, People, and, and people shake and they, they have anxiety attacks and panic attacks and all these different things because they let that fear. Un, when, when you have fear in your life and you leave it unchecked, it will turn into a paranoia. It will turn into a, a, a phobia or some sort of an addiction to fear. And listen, whether you believe devils are real or not, if you don't, why if you watch a scary movie or, you know, you get an evil feeling or that, you know, something's in the room and your skin crawls on your arm or something like that, it's because evil is real. Look at the world. If evil wasn't real, the world wouldn't look like this. So evil is real and there is an enemy of your life trying to take you out. There's no question about it. Now, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of, of power, love, and self-control. Self-control is part of not um, walking by fear because you're going to ch literally change the way you think. You know, when, when you, if there's a, a situation you're fearing, you can change the way you think and actually think different about that situation and you will conquer it. And I, I come by this honestly because I had a lot of fear in my life. A long time ago, but I had a lot of fear in my life. Now, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. So be anxious for nothing. What's, what's anxious? Another word for fear. It literally says, be anxious for nothing. What is nothing? Nothing. So you shouldn't fear anything. You know? And, and people say, well, that's ridiculous. And like I was saying yesterday to some people on the, on, the, on the beach, is there's a difference between cautious and fear. Okay? So if you're walking on ice in the wintertime, and you're walking a little slow and kind of shuffling your steps a little bit, you are being cautious. But you're not going to stay home, generally, hopefully, and, and be so afraid to go for a walk somewhere that you don't actually leave your house for seven months. Right? So there's a difference between fear and caution. We can be cautious about situations, but not be controlled by fear. All right? Now, again, we need... I had a family member who wouldn't even leave his house. At all. We had to drag him out of his house. You know, because he, he just, he had this perception of fear and perceived that everything was going to go wrong in their life. You know, and so when one thing bad happens, what do people normally say? Well, bad things come in three. So you're literally fearing what's going to come, even though it's not going to come. That's what happens. I, I had somebody say the other day, well, you know, something bad happened, so I'm just waiting. For, no, sorry, they said, um, 
things are going really good for us right now. And, you know, we're just basically waiting for the bad to happen. What are you doing? You know, it's going, it's going good. So you're expecting something bad to happen. And they're not bad people. They're wonderful people, amazing people. We love them. But they're, they're just like, man, things are so good right now. It's just like, when's it going to go bad? And you're living in fear. You see, people, people do amazing things. They, 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 they take medications for things they don't have just because they might get it. You know, just because the TV told me, like, you know, right away, somebody, if somebody gets a, a, a sore foot or something like that, it's like, oh, now my foot's going to get amputated because my foot's sore. And you start fearing these things, and fear will destroy your life. Fear will eat your life away. It really will. Fear, bitterness, resentment, hatred, anger, all these different things will start to erode your health. And then people go to different lengths to cure that, and they take all these different things, and then those things have an effect on you, and you start this hamster on a wheel thing instead of just changing the way you think, and it'll change your life. Isn't that amazing? Stop focusing on the fear and watch your life change. I promise you. Stop focusing on the rejection and, um, you know, what people think of you, you and all these different things, and your life will change. I guarantee it. Because you live by what you think. Every word that comes out of your mouth has to be, has, is, is a thought first, right? So if you literally change the way you think, you're, you'll change your life. And you get free. So th this whole thing isn't to beat you down and condemn you. Your whole, this whole thing is to get you free so you can walk free and walk with your head held high, not look at the ground. You know, the Bible says that God is the lifter of your head. You know? It, it, it's, anyway, it's amazing. I've got a lot to go through, so I want to get you guys out of here. But be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with gratitude. Okay, I have a teaching on YouTube about Thanksgiving. You know, not Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving. Being thankful for what happens in your life. Be thankful for all the little things that happen in your life. That in itself will change your mind and change the way you live. Because most people are like, well, look, at they got, they got that, and they got this, and I got nothing, and, and this person, and this person, and she looks like this, and he looks like this, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. Be thankful for what you have. Have gratitude for the things you have in life. If not, you'll be searching that thing down forever and you will never be satisfied. Be thankful. Be thankful for the people that are in your life. Be thankful for the husband or wife you got sitting beside you right now. I know that might be hard, but, you know, just, just be thankful for them. You know, are they perfect? Probably not. But be thankful. And when you find thankfulness... In, in the little things, it will bring joy to your life, hands down. So there's a, there's, a, there's a difference between joy and happiness, okay? People say that money can't buy happiness, right? What a lie. That's, a, that's such a lie. Money can buy happiness, but it can't buy joy. Do you see? So when you get a new toy, if you get a new boat, if you get something, you're not getting this brand new boat and being, oh man, this, uh, this is the worst day of my life, man. I got, I got this brand new sea doo or whatever boat or whatever, and it's just the worst day of my life. You're like, hey, you got a new boat, you wanna go for a ride? You know, you're like, what bought you that? Money. So money can buy you happiness, but it can't buy you joy. Why? Because happiness is external, joy is internal. So your happiness can be eroded if somebody now steals your brand new boat. You're gonna be upset. You're not gonna be happy. But you can be joyful that you got insurance. And hopefully they don't rob you and rip you off. Okay? You see? But you can be, joy never changes. So if somebody passes away, you will not be happy about it. Hopefully. But it doesn't change your joy. You live by joy. And we'll be talking about joy and hope and things coming up. But if, when you live with joy in your life, your happiness may change once in a while if things go wrong. Because things go wrong, believe it or not. But your joy will never change. And I try to live every day of my life with joy. Because joy is internal. And, and external things happen. I mean, stuff happens. But live with joy in your life. And it will change you. But it's very difficult to live with joy when you live by fear. We're going to get to some common fears here coming up. So it says, by prayer and supplication with gratitude, make your request known unto God. 
And the peace of God, there's another thing we'll be talking about, peace. Because when you have fear, you can't have peace. And when you have real peace, you can't have fear. The Bible says in Proverbs that the Lord um, will keep a person in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. So you can live in perfect peace. You know, like how many, you don't have to raise your hands, but how many people in here have trouble sleeping at nighttime? Why? <clears throat> Generally speaking, because Bridget and I have counseled people all over the world, Generally speaking, the, the scariest time for people, a lot of people, is when the lights go down at night and they're all alone with their thoughts. Because during the day, you can go crazy, you can be busy, you can zip zapping and all over the place, but the, the, the people's demons seem to come out at nighttime. That's when the fear comes, that's when the nightmare comes, that's when the night terrors come. And it's all rooted in fear. And they can't sleep, um, but if you stay in perfect peace, you'll go to sleep, phew, I could show you videos that you probably wouldn't believe. Okay, who's seen movies like The Exorcist and scary movies like that where people are manifesting and devil demons and stuff, whether you believe it or not? Who's seen that? Okay, you've seen those scary movies, okay? I've seen that in real life. I got real video. I've seen people do things with their bodies that are humanly impossible to do because of the demons that are in them. So I know this stuff is real. I've seen it. I've seen people manifest. Bridget has been there. Don and Dawson have been there. David Sandy have been there with us. I've seen people do things with their, their bodies that are, is, is impossible by human standards. Okay? So this stuff is real. How do you know that? Well, you might not have seen that other than movies and things like that. But where do you think they get it from? From real life. Did you know when they made the movie The Exorcist? I never watched it. But when they made the movie The Exorcist, they actually consulted demon-possessed people and how they would act. Do you see? That stuff brings fear. So who gets the heebie-jeebies when they watch a scary movie? Why is that? Because it's real. What is it all based around? Fear. All of it. Fear. I don't fear that stuff. I just don't, I don't watch it. But I don't fear it. I just don't watch it. Right? Anyway, that's a whole side note. Um, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will protect your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Protect your hearts and what? Your minds from what? Things like fear. Okay? Now, Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought of your life, meaning don't fear. Don't be anxious. About what? About what you will eat or what you will drink or know about your body or what you will put on, the clothes you wear and stuff. I wear the exact same thing every single week, every day, except Sundays. I try to put a different shirt on, okay? And pants. I don't like wearing pants. But anyway, that's another story. I wear a black t-shirt, black shorts every single day. Ask anybody that knows me. Every single day. And our granddaughter back there, Charlie, said to um, Bridget last time she was here, she's like, why does grandpa always wear the same clothes? It's not good for his skin, okay? I have like 50 black t-shirts, okay? I wear black shorts, black t-shirt, why? Because it's easy. I don't have to stand in front of my closet and be like, what am I gonna wear today? And go through half an hour of trying to decide one and then have 90 things laid out on the bed. Does this match with this? Black always matches with black, all right? I'm good all the time. And then a couple of years ago, I found out that a lot of the geniuses of the world actually wear this, the same clothing, the same type of clothing, the same clothing every single day. So I just consider myself a genius now. Anyway, that's beside the point. That's, yeah, okay, literally, out of the wife, the mouth of my wife, okay? <laughs> if you see our closet, okay, it is, let's just say it's six feet wide. I think it's, I think it's eight feet wide or something. But anyway, I have, I'm not even kidding, probably about eight inches of that of eight feet, okay? And then some little shelves in the corner, okay? There's no, I'm, I'm not, this is God's honest truth, okay? Everything's folded up inside there. I have a light above that, a sticky light, and it, it only shines down a little bit on the top and I've got like four little racks. So I have one of those skull things that you wear, you know what I'm talking about, around your, around your head? I turn that light on, that's how I look in my closet to see if I can find where my clothes are, because anyway, but but because she likes to wear fancier things and clothes and black t-shirt, black shorts, boom, done, call it a day. Anyway, now if you know Brother Dave, Brother Dave starts wearing black t-shirts. You know, Miles showed up here last week wearing a black t-shirt. You know, so I'm wearing off on people. Okay, so if you hang around me long enough, you're gonna wear a black t-shirt and eat a lot of hot sauce. Because I gotta find out if 
it, it, sometimes when the clothes get put away, like this, that, and the other thing, I have, now we're getting into my clothing. I have, I have work shirts, and then I have good shirts. So sometimes the work shirts, because I'm working outside all the time, chopping wood, cutting things. A tree fell on our place yesterday, cut my hand open, and, you know, different things like that. So I got to find the work shirt or the good shirt. And so, yeah, so good question. But uh, now you know a little bit more about me, all right? I'm not hiding anything in my closet. All right. So, uh, is life not more than food and the body clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they do not sow and they do not reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much worth much more than them? Who among you, by taking thought, can add one inch or to his stature? So taking thought, meaning you, who, who among you can add to your life by fear? By fearing these things, who, who, who's going to add to their life? Nobody. What are you going to do? You're going to take from your life. It's scientifically proven that fear will take years off your life. For sure. It is, you can look it up. You can look at Dr. Google if you want to. People can actually die from fear. Too much fear will kill you. You can Google it. Check it out. How do I know that? Because I did. Okay. Now, verse 28. Why take thought about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. Neither they work nor do they spin. Yet I say that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed in one of these, like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is, today is here and tomorrow is thrown into an oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, three times, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat and what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, for your heavenly Father knows what you have need of, uh, that you have need of all these things. But first, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought of tomorrow. There it is again, four times. Take no thought of tomorrow. Don't be afraid of what tomorrow is going to bring. Don't be afraid an hour what's going to happen. Don't be afraid. Don't live with fear. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't, I don't have fear in my life. See how you react in certain situations, and you'll see if you actually have fear or not. Take an honest inventory of your life to see where you live by fear. You know? Um, so take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for the things itself. Sufficient is the day and the trouble thereof. Meaning... There's going to be enough for today for you to deal with. Don't be fretting tomorrow. Now, 1 John 4, 8 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. So, just putting this in a relational point, like a marriage, if you, if you live in fear of your husband or wife leaving you or something of that nature, I talk about marriage a lot. It's because there's not that perfect bond of love between you. If I have no fear, we have no fear of either one of us leaving one another. We always joked, and I got my oldest son sitting in the front row. We always joked the reason we stayed together is because nobody wanted to take the kids, you know. <laughs> I can say that because he's sitting right in front of me. So, um, but we don't, we, we don't live in fear. I don't live in jealousy over her. You know, like I, I was just down in, in Louisiana preaching for three weeks. There's no, I was by myself. There's no jealousy there. No jealousy whatsoever. She, you know, has gone on holidays by herself when I couldn't go and things like that. There's no jealousy. I don't have fear that she's out doing wrong. But, but jealousy can be born out of fear because you're, you're fearing what may be happening. So then you get jealous and jealousy can go into crazy realms and actually kill people. Right? Literally, because they get so jealous, they kill their spouse because they might be doing something wrong, right? There's so many tentacles to fear, you have to actually give it some thought. You can't just sit here for 40 minutes or whatever and then go out and be completely cured of it. There's so many tentacles to fear, and it will reach into every area of your life, okay? And you've got to be really careful about that. Uh, so there's no fear in love, but, whoever, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear has to do with punishment or torment. Whoever fears is not perfect in love. Now, we're just going to look at a couple of common fears. Number one, com well, not number one, but number one I have on this list that I put together. Fear of change, okay? People, people often fear the unknown, so they stay in what me broken or unhealthy. Often change will bring a fresh outlook on life. So our youngest son hates change. That think I'm sort of samesy, samesy. That kid eats the same food, does the same thing. At least I'm... I'll change some things, but he is just, he just does not like change in any way, shape, or form. 
and people have a fear of, of change, so they stay in the same thing all the time and they get bored of it, okay? Now, there is people like myself who can do the same things every single day and not get bored of it. Okay, I literally can do the same thing every day and not get bored of it. I have the same routines, the same things, uh, because they're good things that I do, all right? Another one is uh, fear of failure. This is, this is a big one. Uh, fear of failure. This will often work with the fear of change. If, uh, if what may be broken is still working, why change? Well, it is uh, what you are bringing into life, to, to bringing in life to you and others. Fear of failure will keep people from their destiny in God. Some people are afraid to believe in God. Some people are, are afraid to step out and have faith. Many times, a life of faith is stepping out and trusting God. You may fail, but it is not, is God not bigger than the mistakes you make? So people will, will not start businesses that they feel they need to start, or they, they won't step out and do certain things because of fear. And they're so afraid of failing and looking stupid in, in front of people that they actually stop what will be most beneficial to them because of fear. It's amazing how people's lives could have changed if fear wasn't involved. But the fear took over. So there's many things that people will do, but they're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna be any good at it. Who cares, try anyway, right? People say practice makes perfect, right? That's not true. Practice makes progress on the way to perfection. Because people, if they try something once and they're no good at it, then they just back out of it. But practice makes progress on the way to perfection, all right? So don't be afraid to try something. Just, 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 I'm a pretty plain guy when it comes to food as well. Bridget will try anything. And I've tried a lot of different things. And they're like, try it, you like it. It tastes like, how, how come everything tastes like chicken apparently? You know, what, it tastes nothing like chicken. Try this fish, it tastes like chicken. No, it doesn't, it stinks like fish. <laughs> Sorry, Larry, you know? And so there's certain things that I'll try, like coffee. I don't drink a drop of coffee. I don't drink tea, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. And uh, we go all over the world and people say, oh, you don't like coffee because you've never tried the coffee in this country. Okay, it all smells the same. It all looks the same. And, sorry, you coffee drinkers, but I'm not afraid to try different things. It's just not very good. So listen, <laughs> if, 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 if you want to do something and fear is stopping you, do it anyway. Right? It, you, you may be going into that thing with your knees knocking and your hands trembling and you're freaking out, <clears throat> but when you come out on the other side, you're like, that wasn't so bad. I mean, snowmobiling, okay? I hadn't snowmobiled since the late 1970s, all right? That's a long time ago. And then since we came out here, I got some sleds and different things like that, and he told me which one to buy, so I bought it, and then I got another one, and anyway. Now I'm kind of addicted to sledding. But anyway, so there's certain things going up in these hills and stuff, and I don't ride like the people you see on like YouTube, but I'm getting better at it all the time. So there's certain things that I'll go up or certain things that will jump over, whatever the case may be, and I'm like, I don't know if I should do this. What's the alternative? You know, well, going home in fear or going home with a story. I'm going home with a story. You know, I've been... In, not good situations and it's a good thing Miles and his kids were there to bail me out and different things, but I gotta try it because I'm not gonna let that fear conquer me, you know? Uh, we went out a few years ago and he went one way and I went another way, it's by myself and I'm like, I'm gonna climb this hill, I'll be fine. And uh, I looked at the, I looked, there was a escape route through the trees and I looked at that and I looked at the hill, I looked at that, I looked at the hill, looked at that, looked at the hill and I'm like, I'm going for the hill. Got halfway up the hill and I just dug right to the dirt. I was probably in four or five feet of snow, dug right to the dirt. It was sticking up to the sky like this. I was stuck. There was no one to help me. I had no communication. He was waiting for me. So I just laid on that thing Superman style and just pinned it until she hit rock or something. And I flew right out of there, you know. But I conquered the fear of going up that thing. It's, it's, it's not just big things. It's little things. So I'm constantly trying to challenge myself in things and areas where I might live in fear. Now, I'm not going to be stupid. I'm not going to go and do some of the things that I know these guys do because uh, I, I don't have that level of talent yet <laughs> or skill yet, right? Um, but I'm working my way towards that. So I set little goals for myself every single day. So I go to sleep at night. Accompli I make lists on my phone of the things I need to do. Little things like, oh, there's a crack in the trailer on this side. I got a silicone that. So I can go to sleep at night and say, you know what? I accomplished everything on my list. You see, instead of going there and going, well, what a waste of a day that was. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. 
Number three, fear of getting hurt. Hurt is inevitable when you are dealing with people. Do not live in such a manner to protect yourself from, from hurt so much <clears throat> that you keep yourself a prisoner. You're going to get hurt. Why? Because people are mean. It's true. People are rude. People are mean. They're self-seeking. They're going to lie about you. They're going to cheat you. They're going to steal from you. They're going to do these things. But don't block yourself off so much that you just repel everybody for the fear of getting hurt. Okay? Number four, fear of rejection. Again, people will reject you. They rejected Jesus. They're going to reject you. Be concerned of what God thinks of you, not others. See, it's amazing that so many people are concerned of what other people think about them, but they're not concerned about what your Father in Heaven thinks about you. It's amazing, you know? Um, number five, fear of being judged. Other, people, uh, other people's judgment does not matter. God's does. Live in a manner that is pleasing to God. So <clears throat> people will do things, and again, so people will just like them. Uh, number six, fear of being inadequate. We all fall short, and nobody I know has it all together. Okay, except my wife. Mm-hmm. I got to I got to say that a fear of inadequacy can lead to a life of performance. Now, many times you will see where I talked about this last week, but a a son will hear growing up how terrible you are. You'll never amount to anything. You're te- horrible. You're 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 a bum. All that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and then you always have that fear of being inadequate. You're always living with that. Remember last week we talked about words? How that, those words are ringing in your head constantly and you live with the fear of being inadequate because of what you heard 40 years ago. Yet you've accomplished amazing things. I know a man that has accomplished amazing things in his life. He's a great man, and, but he still has this thing from his dad years ago that he's just not good enough. And his life is amazing. Like done absolutely incredible things, but it's that still, that still small voice that's in you that is calling out from you, even from possibly the grave, that you're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. This is why I've told you before, every time I talk to this, this guy or my youngest son, we tell him we love him all the time. And you're sitting right there, you can ask him, no matter what, you know, um, and that'll never change, all right? Um, This often happens to boys growing up and their dad was not so good. They often live their life trying to please their dad, even though their dad might have passed away, leaving them feeling inadequate. This works for women too, but a lot of men. Inadequate for for possibly the rest of their lives. Usually to these people, nothing is ever good enough. It comes from deep-rooted emotional pain in one's life, where nothing is ever good enough. You know? Uh, And number seven, fear of being alone. We have met women who have literally married, and, and vice versa too, but a lot of times it's women, who have literally married the devil just so they won't be alone. Like, I mean, terrible. How do I know? I call, I call her sister, <laughs> my older sister. She's, she's yeah, married some, some real something or others. Anyway, don't be so afraid. We, like, we have a family member who is not even remotely in love with her husband. But she sticks with them. But because she made a mistake years ago of leaving another one. And she's just stuck in it because she's so afraid to, to she move, went from one to another to another just because she's totally afraid of being alone. And we've met so many people who are just afraid to be alone. Don't marry a devil just because you're, you're going to be alone or whatever. Don't do that. You know, and, and stay away from some of those dating apps and things like that, you know. Uh, I told you this, I think I told you the story, I don't know if I did or not, but Mark just, because he runs a real estate company in in Calgary, he just stopped a lady from being scammed out of $50,000, an older lady, because she just wants to be with somebody. And she's on, what was the app called? You remember some some app thing or whatever. And she's like, oh, I'm gonna, this this guy's going to move me from Toronto. I'm, I'm, she was moving from Calgary to Toronto. And he's, he's going to come all the way from Toronto to Calgary and move me back to Calgary for $500 worth of gift certificates or gift cards or whatever. Really now? Really. Like $500 it costs you almost that to go to Moye, you know, in fuel. Anyway, and so he stopped her from, from doing this, and then she went back into it again, went back into it again. And because she's so afraid of being alone that she's she getting trapped in all these situations, and she's already been taken for about 100 grand. You know, and he stopped it. 
It was amazing. She didn't believe him at first, and we were going to call the police and all these different things, and he deleted the app and everything off the phone. Um, but just trying to save one of his customers, who he does not know. That's good. But she was being robbed. You know, why? For fear of being alone. You know. Anyway, we're almost finished up here. Uh, we know so many people so afraid of being alone that they will shack up with the devil and become a slave to that person. Usually, any form of life they once had will be taken from them. I told you that story last week. But hey, at least they're not alone, right? Deal with the fear that makes you think you must be with someone. Get to know who you are in Christ and live with confidence that you never thought possible. Now, just quickly here, ways to overcome fear. Permit the peace of God to enter your life. Literally, ask God, ask Christ to come into your life and save you from this, okay? Confess all worry and prayer, or in prayer and supplication. So go to God in prayer. Like, we've all generally all been taught to pray as kids. You know, generally in school, way back then, not so much now, you know, but our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Everybody seems to know the Lord's Prayer, right? Go to God and be like, listen, I'm petrified of this, 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 and this. I live by fear in my life all the time, and I, need, I want this gone. I don't want to live this way. Number three, think on right things. Because when you focus on the fear, it will be a reality to you. You will become what you focus on, hands down. So focus on the right things, okay? I'm trying to give you a recipe for freedom and peace, okay? Number four, keep your mind stayed on God. Number five, use the spiritual weapons of warfare. We'll be talking about all these things moving on, but uh, number six, put on the whole armor of God. But again, I'll explain that another week. Number seven, have faith in God. So actually trust God. Trust God that is real. Um, and cast all your cares upon him. Okay? Um, just like our kids come to us and say, hey, I, I want this. I, I'm thinking about doing this. And that. We talk about things all the time. So what are they doing? They're casting their cares upon us to, so we can help them and give some wisdom and hopefully and we learn things from him and he learns things from us. This is what God can be. He's a real true father. So you can actually cast your cares upon him and say, listen, I'm petrified of this situation or I'm being tormented. We're going to talk about torment one day too because torment is terrible. Torment will eat up your entire life, right? It, it, it will destroy your very nature when you live by torment. And torment is of the mind, okay? Because the mind is very powerful. And that's where self-condemnation comes from. You will self-condemn yourself and it will be torment to you. Why? Because if you're self-condemning yourself, whether you realize this or not, you should, you're always with yourself. You can never leave yourself. So you, you're always with your thoughts. And if those thoughts are self-condemnation and torment and hatred and unforgiveness towards yourself, that's how you're going to live your life every single day. Instead of letting it all go, getting out of fear, and walking in peace. It's, it's, listen, there is no other life to live than this. You know, I'm not saying that I've perfected it. Not, I would never stand here and tell you I've perfected it. But I will tell you that I am not what I was or who I was or anything like that. Um, a lot of that died 30 years ago, you know, um, and if there's an area of my life that I feel there's a fear in or something like that, um, I will do everything I can to quickly uh, squash it and conquer it, to show fear that I'm the boss and that fear isn't the boss, right? So anyway, we're going to get you out of here. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys coming. Um, you know, we're not... It's not typical churchy stuff, you know. We just we're trying to help people because the world seems to be getting more broken all the time, and all we're trying to do is is bring some hope, bring some freedom, bring some peace, and do our best to to change the world in whatever we can, you know. And our world is right outside those doors, right? So anyway, God bless you guys. Go enjoy um, the warm weather and the water and everything you're going to do, and don't spontaneously combust. You know, and uh, you're going to be fine, okay? If you get hot, drink some water, put a hat on, all right? Um, anyway, God bless you guys. If you have any questions or you need prayer for something, we're right here, okay? God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Take care.